Welcome to my channel. This is Hot Mess and Hot Glue. My name is Lynn and this is Christmas 2021. I am so sorry for how long this video has taken me to get out. You might even be able to still hear it in my voice, but I have been kind of sick for the last week. Um, so it's another reason why I'm just deciding to stay behind the camera. So let's just get started and have some fun. We've got, so these three Dollar Tree snow globe cutouts are adorable as is. However, I just kind of wanted to change them up, give them a little bit more of a modern, uh, updated feel. This year, I'm going with more of a kind of dark green, really deep farmhouse colored red, black, and white. Those are going to pretty much be my main colors for the main living room. Um, I do have a couple kind of vignette ideas. I want to do some red and whites, maybe a little bit of Grinch, but the whole kitchen's going to be a thing. You guys got to stay tuned. It's going to be a ton of fun. So for this first video, I really wanted to kind of see what I can come up with that is still on that more modern and clean, um, very simplistic uh, decorations. And so using these, I did find this really cute, it's a faux leather felt. And so it was part of Hobby Lobby's half off sale when they did their felt for 50% off. So I think I only paid a dollar for it. Now I do have tons of other um, like faux leather materials that I have been working with. However, this one I thought was kind of neat because it's readily available and you can get it very cheap. So I just wanted to kind of give everyone a like a different option as opposed to having to buy a big thing of scrap leather. Now, the scrapbook paper that I'm using, it is also from Hobby Lobby. I'm not doing anything y'all haven't seen me do before. So I traced out the scrapbook paper, glued it on with my glue stick, and now I'm just using an emery board to go through and tighten up those edges to make sure that it's all nice and clean. These stickers were also from Hobby Lobby. I just loved their silhouette. It's very simple. And the idea of having these smaller trees in a black print with the white background and then the leather trim, I just thought this looked so sleek and modern and very clean, but not, again, I try not to make things cold looking when I try to keep them a little bit more modern and neutral. And I felt like I was a little teetering on this one. You'll have to leave me some comments down below and let me know what you think. Now, it just felt like it was missing something. And for some reason, this bow just, it was not sitting well. I could not figure out what to do with it. And so honestly, I put this project aside I want to say almost two days. I could not figure it out. And then I figured, you know, I've got three of them. And I wanted to kind of spread them out. You know, I really like their colors. I like the style. So I figured if I put welcome on one of them, I could put that one kind of near the entryway table. And then I picked out memories. And then the last one it says cherish. And those can go, one can go on a tiered tray. One can go on the TV stand. I mean, I figure having them kind of sprinkled here and there and as kind of shelf sitters, a little bit of, um, kind of filler decor. Uh, these rub on transfers really did great as far as transferring onto this faux leather. I was amazed and I really love the way that these turned out. Again, please let me know in the comments below if you like this one or what you might have done differently. For this next one here, I wanted to make sure that I was using items that aren't going to be very difficult to find, especially because we're starting a little earlier here on YouTube. We waste no time. We get right on to the next holiday lickety split. So even though my house is full of all the Halloween decor, 
I'm working on Christmas decor, which is just a little strange. Still haven't had Halloween or Thanksgiving, but you know what? It's so much fun. The weather's starting to cool down. Now, this is a little trinket holder, and I believe it is meant for um, like holding your wedding ring. Uh, I'm not 100% sure, but I mean, it's pretty obvious that it's got a really modern shape to it that can easily be transformed into a Christmas tree or something reminiscent, reminiscent of such a decor. So using this thin black tape, it's very similar to electrical tape. I get it on Amazon and I will have to link it down below because I want to say it was like six or seven dollars. I got four of these rolls and I've used this one roll so many times and I've yet to seemingly put any kind of a dent into it. So I'm really liking this product. It's really fun. And it's actually really nice too if you want to use it to tape off areas to make thin lines. So again, it's actually really helpful. I really enjoy using it and it's easy to work with and incredibly inexpensive. So back to this little project here, you can find these in the home decor section where you might find um, other little trinket trays, the uh, picture frames and candle holders and such like that. And so finding this should not be that difficult. This particular one came from last year, but I have another one that I purchased this year. So moving back to the project itself, I kind of just wanted to add a little bit of a faux wood texture to the bottom of this. And I'm using the wrong brush for this. And I just am so stubborn. I just, it takes me forever just to correct my mistake. So once I really just admit, okay, I didn't choose the right brush going into this, I decided to grab a smaller one. Doing that, I was able to put lighter, smaller strokes in on the white chalk paint that I used to cover this. Now, I still was putting on too much. So what I did was is I dried the brush off and then I went back through it and you can see it's using a dry brush. I'm able to kind of scrape and remove any excess or, you know, heavy strokes of that Waverly antiquing wax so that it had a lighter wood grain effect. And moving on to the next one. So these cute little Christmas trees here, I had grabbed these kind of mountain shaped um, wood pieces. These were actually fairly recently. I will say I do have a few Dollar Trees that I can pick from. And there's one particularly that I find has a lot of the like outdated decor. I don't know if they keep a box of it hidden in the back and they wait until other locations aren't putting them out anymore and then they kind of put a box out as a surprise. I don't know. However, when I came across these, I I mean, it's kind of obvious. I feel like these are, these are another obvious kind of Christmas tree pick. And originally I was going to stagger the two. You can tell by how I drew on my black lines. And I was going to stagger the two as far as the scrapbook paper goes. And I just completely zone out sometimes. And I did not do that. The end result was completely unaffected. And I would honestly probably know it would have even noticed had I not mentioned it. But I have to kind of laugh at myself where it's I go into something with great plans and yet I just sometimes don't follow through with it because I just get so in the zone and focus on what I'm doing. I'm using this really pretty kind of dark green plaid scrapbook paper that I got from Hobby Lobby. I try to go only when it's on sale. Um, I do miss when they did four for a dollar, but can't sit here and complain over it because they're not going to bring it back. So anyway, I picked this dark green one and then I also picked a black and white striped plaid looking um, pattern here. And I just thought that the contrast was really pretty. I really enjoyed the dark green with the slight white accents on the green paper and then that bright white to kind of bring out the little bit of white that's in the green paper. Now this is where I 
was saying I meant to stagger them. So I kind of wanted the larger tree to be on top and the smaller tree to be on top on the other one. I'm probably not making any sense. You guys, honestly, I have not been feeling great. I'm so sorry. My brain typically struggles, but it's definitely struggling a little extra these days. So I love using my glue stick to attach this. Now I do have some other scrapbook paper that's more of a cardstock and I've been feeling a little bit more comfortable using Mod Podge to attach those. But when it comes to the thinner scrapbook paper, I'm still finding I get a much better result using a glue stick. I did go through and add a small embellishment to each of these. I had come across a um, really cute ornament from Walmart. So I attached the little wood bead um, snowflake and then the Mary one. Whoa. The Mary symbol there is just um, a wood round that I had and then a paper cutout of a printout that I put on there. For this next one, now these little house cutouts were all over the stores I want to say in the springtime maybe January February so maybe before spring anyway I picked up a ton I grabbed probably five or six of each of the different shapes and I just love these things I think if you see them and they come back on your stores I say pick a few up because you just can't go wrong there's so many things you can do with these so this is not a new idea here on YouTube. I know a ton of crafters have utilized this technique. Um, it's really just popping off the back, ripping off the majority of any loose paper. Now I am going to be covering this. I don't worry too much about taking off all of the paper. I found these two adorable gift bags at the Dollar Tree. And what I love is that you get two for a dollar. And I decided to go with the black and green trees on this one. It was a little bit similar to the trees that I used in the snow globe project. And I do try to make things kind of match a little bit in the videos. Um, so I thought this would be a good one to use. I will likely go through and do something similar with the other paper. So once I've got that traced and cut, then I just go through with some chalkboard paint. I still haven't gotten any regular black paint. This is just such a huge jug. I'm just going to use this before I buy any more. Uh, so I'm just going to paint the entire uh, frame of this little house shaped, I want to say picture frame, but it's really not a picture frame. Once I get that completely painted and it's dry, then it's a very simple attachment using a little bit of hot glue and then I decided to add some embellishment. And this is a napkin ring holder that I got from Hobby Lobby during their 40% off of their fall sale. And they only had the one. I mean, this thing is so pretty, but they only had the one. And I knew I wasn't going to use it as a napkin ring holder. So I decided to just kind of measure this down using the shape of the house to see how much I needed to trim off of this. And I thought that it would make a really nice accent piece to the interior of the house itself. And so once I got that cut down to the proper shape, I just use a couple thin lines of hot glue to attach it. And Again, I went back to these beautiful little rub-on transfers. I love the font on this one. I think it's very pretty. And again, I'm constantly shocked at how well these rub-on transfers work. I think the only ones I've ever really had trouble with were the gold ones. And I've only, I tried them once, didn't work out well and haven't tried them again. So using this little stylus um, kind of tracing tool that I, I it came in a pack of like six, I believe, when I got my tracing paper and my carbon paper, so, or graphite paper, however, whatever you prefer to call it. <laughs> it came with a ton of them, and I just really like using them for the rub-on transfers because there's larger ones and smaller ones, and so you have a little bit more control with the different sizes. The Dollar Tree sells a um, embossing stylus just like this, and it works perfect, but I just simply love the dark green, the black, and then that crisp white. And then with the accent of the brown leather, I really, really like this. This could not have been any more simple. I mean, you just trace it onto a gift bag, cut it out, a little bit of glue, and there you go.
All right, so using another pretty easy to find item in the home decor section, um, I have seen these in the heart shape. I've seen these in a hexagon shape. And again, they're just kind of where you would find your picture frames and candle holders and things of that nature. I am going to be covering the front part of it because that's painted on pretty well. So I decided to paint the back side because it was going to take what I thought would be just less coats of paint than to try to cover the front side with paint. And so we paint this side so that it's finished and if it gets turned around, it's not as ugly. And then I'm using a very thick cardstock um, scrapbook paper. Now this particular one came in a kind of a booklet that I've been using and it's just a ton of different shades of shiplap and again I always get it when they have it for 50% off. Now I cannot rave about my heat gun enough. This thing is such a lifesaver especially when you're waiting for that first top coat to or the first coat of paint to dry. It is amazing and it really allows you just to kind of speed your projects up. So if you don't have one I would Think about putting this on your Christmas list. I'll of course have it linked down below so in case you're interested you can go find where I found it and get a pretty good price on it. I want to say it was only like 11 or 12 bucks. So going back to the oh so complicated technique of just tracing onto the scrapbook paper. I know it seems a little wasteful because I traced it right in the middle but on the sides of that scrapbook paper there's um some detailing that I didn't want on this part. So that's why I chose to do the middle in case you were curious. Now on another gift bag that I purchased, it had this really cute saying and it just said, um, honestly, I think it just is a merry little Christmas or a very merry Christmas. And I used my tracing paper because I'm obsessed with tracing everything that I like and trying to get multiple uses out of it. Now to transfer it onto the darker paper, I used some chalk and the chalk helped me get a white transfer line. I then just went over it with a silver. It looks gray, but it's actually more of kind of a glittery silver paint marker. And I just kind of went right back over the lines and kept this extremely simple. Now, um, you could always use your Cricut. You could always use stickers. If you didn't want to trace something, you can just freehand it. You can put whatever you want. And I think that is one of the most fun things about a lot of these projects is, you know, they're, they don't necessarily have to be exactly what you would put in your home. But, you know, maybe with a different scrapbook paper or a different saying or a different, you know, form of lettering or anything like that. Again, this little shape here is probably going to be pretty common as far as any DIY Christmas decor because it has that very classic, very in-your-face Christmas tree shape. For this next project, I am going to be starting out with a picture that I got on clearance from Dollar General. I want to, I mean, I think I show the price here. I want to say it was like two or three dollars. It was incredibly inexpensive. Now, I trace the outline again because I love to trace, but I trace the outline of that inner circle because at first I kind of thought I was going to put some scrapbook paper in there and I just, it didn't sit well. I didn't love it. So, I decided to just go through, use this really pretty red, it's a deep burgundy by Folk Art, which is a plaid product. And I had to put, I want to say four coats on this. And it has nothing to really do so much with the paint, I don't believe. I mean, maybe if I had used a, a white chalk paint underneath it, I probably would have been able to kind of <laughs> reduce the amount of coats of paint that I had to put on. These little details, though, as I'm working on projects, those kinds of things don't necessarily 
dawn on me because I really am just enjoying myself. I'm just sitting in front of a project. I'm painting away. I'm listening to a podcast. I'm watching a movie or whatever it is. But this is kind of my relaxation. This is my therapeutic time. And so I really enjoy the process of painting. Now, I would suggest though, if maybe it's, you know, you don't want it to be as time consuming, probably put a coat of chalk paint on there. Now I got these really cool wood rounds on Amazon and I'm going to link them down below. I'm going to be using these quite a bit through my Christmas series. I found these and they come with little wood stands. And so these are going to be really fun um, items to use to make some really nice, I think, tier tray decor. And I think, again, it's kind of obvious with its shape. We're going to do some really fun custom ornaments. Now, I decided to give it a stained effect using Waverly Antiquing Wax and some tape just to kind of create a little bit of detail. Now, I was kind of going for like a mini wood round door sign-ish idea. That's kind of where my brain was going with this. So I thought, oh, I'll color block it and... Then I realized doing the two pieces of tape was just going to be a little too thick. So I removed that second piece of tape and just kept the first one. Now, it is on purpose that this um, color blocking is not right in the middle. You can see it's kind of farther down. I did that on purpose. I just thought that making it a little less perfect and maybe just having a little bit more of that visual element. I don't know. I just kind of was trying something out. I personally like the way it turned out. Um using that line to kind of line up the O and the Y. That way the J kind of had a little bit of a hangover onto the white paint. I also thought that that was a really kind of fun, small little design detail that I felt made just enough of a difference that it wasn't too plain. So I do my best to try to find the center of this and to hot glue this like center ring or the center portion of this on. I put just a little bit of hot glue on it and then I kind of maneuver it around. Now it still seemed a little plain. So taking some of the garland here from Hobby Lobby, now you can find this year round in their wedding section and it's actually cheaper than the set that they'll sell in the Christmas section. So, um, and at the time, Christmas was only 40% off. And so this was 50%. In the end, I just tried to find the best deal that I could. So again, you can see here, I'm going to put a ton of glue on there, but I barely press this down. This way, I have a chance to move it around. So using a little bit of hot glue, I'm just going to kind of tack this little kind of... Um, thin garland all the way around the outer layer of this smaller wood round and I just kind of wanted to break up that um, that little center area because there was a lot of that really pretty red showing however I felt like without that greenery it was almost kind of too cold and they were kind of missing a little bit of that holiday element For this next project these little cameras they're picture frames and they came out last year um and i had picked one up and i had this in mind and i did not end up having time and i didn't i didn't have a channel and um but i had come up with this idea last year and i thought it would be really fun and i'm sure i know i personally haven't seen the channels that I subscribe to do this. However, I'm not going to sit here and pretend like I'm the only one to come up with this. Someone out there has done this and they probably did it better. So I'm just going to throw that disclaimer out there. But I thought when I saw it at Christmas time, it was marketed as a stocking stuffer and it just screamed Santa cam. And so I knew I had to get one. And I couldn't find the one that I picked up last year. So I bought a new one because I was extremely happy to see them back out this year, which is ultimately why I ended up deciding to show my idea here on my channel was you can actually go out and find these. I hate um, when Dollar Tree discontinues really fun ideas and you kind of miss the opportunity to make something fun. Anyway, let's get back to this little thing. So um, 
again, I decided to go with a red. I didn't go with as deep of a red, but I still wanted kind of a darker red. Now I ended up using Crimson by Waverly and I did three coats of that to get the full coverage that I really wanted. Now for that black circle there, I used my Arteza acrylic paints because those end up with a very glossy finish. And I liked that. I thought it was a little reminiscent of the actual camera lens itself. And then just adding a couple details as far as re-outlining the black um, silhouette of the camera lens itself with an oil-based Arteza paint pen because that will also give a shiny finish. I had this little six pack of, or maybe it was more than six, but I had these little um, snowflakes and I just thought it would be kind of nice to break up that just real blank space. It just looked a little too empty. Now, for whatever reason, I could not get markers to work on this paint. And I'm sure it was more of something I was doing wrong. But ultimately, I knew I wanted to keep the shiny finish. And so I went through with an Arteza white color. And I did two coats of that just to kind of fill in that center portion of the camera lens. I then added kind of like a little, there's a little decorative detail to it to make that stand out just a little bit more. This, again, such an easy, straightforward, simple project. Nothing special is needed. And I just thought that this was so fun. I haven't quite decided if I was going to you know, put any wording on it or, you know, vinyl Santa cam or something like that. I'm not really sure. You guys will have to help me out with that. I love when you guys give me ideas. I mean, I swear the ideas that I get from you guys are the best. So please let me know what you think. I feel like it's definitely needing a little something. This next project here, you guys, honestly, I should have put this first because this is my favorite. I was so excited when this idea kind of came to me. Now, again, I will say I personally have not seen anyone do this, but if it's out there, I am not intentionally taking credit, nor will I, you know, pretend that I'm the only one. Okay. So getting to the project itself, using one of these little wood cutout trays from the Dollar Tree, which I love that they're selling and these itty bitty snowman. Love these things. So I saw the snowman and it just kind of hit me. I thought, you know what? I can absolutely use those as legs for a riser. And it's always around a Halloween Thanksgiving and Christmas that I tend to always seem to run out of risers. You know, it's like there's always so many really cute things to put on display. And so I thought this would be a really cute opportunity to make a very cheap, small display tray slash riser. All I did was glue those guys on, put a little antiquing wax on it and ta-da, look how cute these are. And what I love is it's like, when you know they're little snowmen, you can see that they're snowmen. But if you don't know, you may not pay enough attention to their shape to even realize it. So it could go year round and you could easily get away with using it year round. But I also love that there's almost this kind of secret Easter egg, whimsical Christmas vibe to this tiny little riser. This is absolutely my favorite and it was absolutely the easiest. I am obsessed with these tiny little sleds that they've come out with this year. I love these. I did pick up one of each style, but this one here was my favorite and I just could not wait to use it. So again, I wanted to stick with a kind of dark, deep red and I thought that the red that I had opened <laughs> was the crimson color. However, when I looked at it, it was actually the color lacquer. No, no, no. I'm sorry. I'm mistaken. It was Merlot. And that's why it's got such a beautiful purple tint to it, which I love the color. It's just, that's not the color I was going for. So I went back to my plaid color of deep burgundy and I decided to cover the top portion of the sled with that. Then I decided to stain the bottom portion using Waverly's antiquing wax. And then I go through and give everything just a really nice light sanding to kind of bring out the edges and the details. 
I don't want it necessarily rustic, but I do want to accentuate the details and the shape of everything. So I'm pretty light handed when it comes to the sanding of this, but I still sand it nonetheless. Now this little vase filler pick, pick, pack, <laughs> I got this probably in the springtime, but with the greenery and everything that was in it, it was much more reminiscent of um, fall and Christmas and winter. So I just picked one up. It was the only one that I ever found. It was the, if there were more, I probably would have grabbed more, but it's the only one I've ever seen. And it came with these little itty bitty pine cones. I thought they were so cute. So just kind of taking a couple pieces, arranging them in a way that kind of looked somewhat decent on this tiny little sled. Once I got them glued on, again, I wanted to keep it kind of simple to the point, but this was so quick, so easy, and it is so adorable. Absolutely love, love, love these tiny sleds. This project here is going to wrap it up for this video. This is so exciting. This Christmas season is my very first YouTube Christmas season. I'm really hoping to just kind of bust out as much of my creativity and as much of my holiday spirit as I possibly can give you guys a wide variety. I love doing a ton of different Christmas stuff. If you guys liked this video, please, please, please give it a big thumbs up. I can't tell you how much it really does help my channel grow here on YouTube. And thank you so much for spending part of your day with me. Again, you guys are really the MVPs. Bye.